All right, welcome to my latest video. That's the word I was thinking of. What's up, YouTube? It's this guy, Jeremy McDonald. Let me hear you say it. One of your very favorite, one of your very favorite people with Parkinson's. Of course, it's Jeremy, also known as J Mac, Jeremy Mac. Let's do this thing. All right. This is J Mac here. If you'd like to get a hold of me, J Mac Podcaster, J A Y M A C Podcaster at gmail.com. Instagram at Jeremy Mac and the number 76. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I don't say that very often because I don't want to be pushy, but I'm trying to get to 2,000, and every time you give me a thumbs up, it boosts my video. So if you like it, let the world know. By the way, before we go any further, I would just like to bring attention to my shirt here. The Humane Society of Missouri. We adopted a new pit bull puppy. I'll throw up a picture. She's adorable. Um, our older dog, Maggie, she's 12. She's getting up there in age, and we just kind of wanted to have like a younger dog, maybe kind of enrich her life a little bit more. <laughs> Maggie does not like Bubbles at the moment. Her name is Bubbles. That was the pound name, not the name we gave to her, but she's just so bubbly, we thought we'd keep it. But so we're still kind of waiting for the, 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 uh, the gel, the uh, come together of the pets. We'll get there. All right, so what I wanted to talk to you today about, let me get a drink of water. What kind of parts? Is Parkinson's memory and language. All right, one of the things that some people struggle with, I can struggle with it to some extent, is word recall. Um, as far as memory goes, I'm I got a pretty good memory. Like if I... Not so, not so much when I'm off cinemat. I mean, I can remember when I'm off cinemat, but cinemat really makes my memory pop, you know. Um, but I can remember things about um, details of my childhood, good and bad. It's kind of a double-edged sword there. I can remember conversations with friends that happened 20 or 30 years ago. So I've realized that my memory in certain ways is... I don't think a, a lot of people remember as many things about their life as I do. But once again, it could be a double-edged sword there. It's, you want to remember the good, you'd like to forget the bad. I remember them both. But there's, a, there's also this thing with, there's a connection between Parkinson's and the language and, and the sense of word recall. Um, I've got a, a dear friend who is nearing the end of their journey with PD. And they are, sorry, I'm a little twitchy right now. Just, I guess I'm... My medicine's still kind of kicking in. Sometimes when I, when it's kicking, I can get a little animated. This is me. I'm just letting you see. But this person is going through the final stages of their journey with PD. And they are almost completely, if not totally, nonverbal at this point. I don't know that it's... I don't know that if they, if they can't speak or don't want to speak or a combination of the both. So Parkinson's definitely affects the language center of our brains in ways that they probably can't even understand. One thing that's odd to me is when I get up in the morning, now I'm not bilingual, but I know I know a good amount of Spanish. I could probably get by in Mexico. I'd learn the words I need to know other than PD. I, I find myself looking at the coffee pot and, and thinking in Spanish, you know, cafe, which means coffee, also means brown. Uh, sometimes the Spanish words will pop into my head or the little German I know will pop into my head before the English words. Now, I don't know if that's just me or what it is, but bilingual people generally, I think, have a, a, a lower rate of, lower chance of getting dementia. I read a study one time, you'd have to look it up. But I noticed that sometimes in my conversation, and you can probably tell maybe in this video, this video though, sometimes I usually edit out my stumbles. Um, I'll be searching for a word and it won't pop into my brain. Now, some people could say you're just getting older, but there's... There's a facet of Parkinson's disease and language that it's somehow, sometimes the word will be there and I can't get it out. I, it's either I hear it and I can't get it out of my mouth or I just, I'm searching for that word. Now, I don't want to make like a mountain out of a molehill, but this can be really debilitating for some people. I've actually asked people to come on my, not just Parkinson's, and they tell me, I can't keep up with you verbally. I, I don't, my brain does not work. My, it does not sync up with my mouth in the way that yours does, although my wife would disagree. <laughs> Maybe my sister-in-law's too. But it's a kind of a weird phenomenon. I guess I'd like you to share your stories. Is searching for a word or 
a phrase, a common thing for you? And, and do you relate it to Parkinson's? Or have you always been one of those pers people that like to search for the right word? Sometimes, i got to be honest with you, I like to find the perfect word. And uh, I don't want to use the wrong word. So sometimes I have to go through my Rolodex. And maybe it takes a few extra seconds for my, my brain to click and find the, the right word. But sometimes the word just completely escapes me. One of the things that I'm very OCD about uh, is movie movies. Like who actors. I ask my friend Catherine. If I, if I see a movie and I see somebody and I cannot remember, remember their name and I cannot remember what they're in, I'll have to stop the movie and get on my iPad and look up Internet Movie Database. Um, sometimes that's just an OCD thing, but there's sometimes I literally... Names I should know, like a Harrison Ford or something like, why won't it come? I know it's in there somewhere. It's like you got to rattle your brain loose. So, yeah, I'd like to just kind of get your take on memory and um, language and... For those of you who are bilingual out there, because I know I have people in uh, in uh, Austria and the UK and um, yeah, France and stuff like that. So just maybe give me your your take on that. It's frustrating when you want to talk and you want to get a word out and you can't find it. Years ago, I did this podcast and we were talking about the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Christmas special. For those of you in uh, probably pretty popular around the world. And I was I was looking for the for the the uh, the phrase. See, it's it's slipping out of my brain right now. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the Chronicles of Narnia. I was looking for that phrase, and all I could think of was Lord of the Rings. Now that's kind of part and parcel. I mean, it's kind of very very similar, very similar genre. And I could not remember it. And my my friend Adam at the time goes, "Are you drunk?" And I'm like, "No, I just could not remember Lord of the uh, <laughs> Chronicles of Narnia." So I don't know if I don't know if it's Parkinson's. I don't want to make be like it's all Parkinson's, but there's some parts of me where I'm like, I should be quicker than that. I remember years ago I was having a conversation with somebody and I just got out of bed and I just taken my cinnamon and I was like, I was talking, 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 and then all of a sudden I just froze. My brain, I couldn't think of the words. It was like marble scrambled kind of moment. It can't all be Parkinson's, but it's gotta be somewhat related. Like I said, I've got a I've got a really sharp memory for a lot of things. Um, especially events in my life. And so I don't know. It's probably a different se section of my brain where the words are stored than the memory. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a neuroscientist by any stretch. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll, we'll get together and talk about it. Okay, by the way, it's getting ready to be uh, cold as Satan's ball sack here coming up in a couple... Uh, couple days in St. Louis. So um, I'll probably do some, maybe I'll do a live stream because I'll be stuck inside the whole time with nothing to do. By the way, stay tuned. After this is over, I'm going to show you this Batmobile up here. Peace and love from the cold city of St. Louis. Okay, here's what I was talking to you about. This is the Batman 66 Batmobile. My good friend Catherine got it for me. Let's see if we can get a little closer Get some of the detail. Comic book stuff on the back. This is a really, really, really cool piece. And I like to feature some of my... A uh, little dust on it. I like to feature some of my toys on um, the video at the end after people are done with the Parkinson stuff. Because, uh, guys, I can't just talk about PD. It sucks. It, it, it's, it sucks. It's just bad. Uh, so I have to lighten it up with this. But yeah, this is a pretty cool thing. Unopened. Still sealed in box. My son Liam would want to get it out, but no, we take it out of the box. Not worth nothing. But it's not. It's not about that. It's about I just like nothing says um, to me joy and excitement like a bunch of unopened toys because there's there's always the potential you could just go freaking crazy and open all of them.